Uh, almost there. Just waiting for that. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. As often happens with this show, the guests are often referrals from past guests. And so I have Lisa Carlin on doing a cooking demo. And she said, I must have her friend Audrey Dunham on. And this is perfect because she actually has a new book that is perfect for Christmas because it's about Christmas cookies. And when you think of Christmas, you got to think of cookies especially that leaves leave some for Santa. And, you know, if Santa went vegan, he probably wouldn't be so paunchy. So there'll be a perfect book. And she's going to demonstrate one of the recipes from the book. She's going to make some chocolate dip macaroons. Please welcome Audrey Dunham. Congratulations on your new book. It looks beautiful. And I'm going to post some links on the chat and in the show notes so people can get it. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Chef Kate, for having me. You're the best. I've been following you for a very long time. Uh, it's an honor to be here with you today, and I'm excited to show you my new book, and you'll have to excuse my cuckoo clock if you can hear that. It, I should have known right at two o'clock it would go off. But anyway, um, so my book is called Vegan Christmas Cookies and Cocoa, and the tagline is holiday treats and warm winter drinks all astonishingly egg and dairy free. So I hope you can hear that over the cuckoo clock. But <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You, you know, I remember once I was on the show Cupcake Wars. I didn't win, but I didn't lose. And I remember like I was conflicted as to whether I should go on because I was going to have to use some ingredients. I wasn't a hundred percent. You know, and Dr. Barnard said, that's how you draw people into veganism is through desserts. So you were on Cupcake Wars? Yeah, but I didn't win. But I, I wasn't the first to go home, but I didn't win either. Yeah, that's a difficult show. <laughs> Let me tell you, you're baking a lot of cupcakes, like 500 of them. So yeah, I was. Because that is a lot of pressure on that show. I used to watch it. Really today, and um, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to find it on YouTube because I. Wait, okay, I mean, yeah, those uh, those many many moons ago. I want to say like eight years ago or something. But yeah, yeah, reality TV is very very stressful. But I didn't know if I should do it. And Dr. Barnard said, you know, yeah, he goes get people to come in through the dessert, and then you hit them over the head with the kale. Absolutely, I totally agree. I really think that if somebody's eating something labeled vegan for the first time, because people are eating vegan foods all the time and they just don't even realize it. If it's labeled vegan or they're told it's vegan ahead of time, you can be a little nervous about it. If the very first thing they eat is something really awesome, I feel that they're more likely to try more vegan foods in the future and maybe even eventually become vegan themselves. And so I agree, start with the desserts. Um, this book is a great way to do that. And cupcakes, of course, as well. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, because you know I used to be a pastry chef for five years at Sante Restaurant on La Brea before they closed. And when people are eating, the, like if people are trying to eat something that's a steak, you you now with the, the meats they have now, maybe you can fool them. But like people don't eat a piece of cake and say, well, wait a minute, where's the egg? You know, like they, they, they don't think about it that way. They just want it to be delicious and, and preferably pretty too. It comes down to, oh yes, and, and people ask me all the time, I have twin five-year-old boys, how do you raise vegan kids, how do you raise plant-based kids? First and foremost, it comes down to presentation. Starting from really early on, I'm saying one years old, you have to make their food look pretty. Um, so that's how you get them to eat the Brussels sprouts and the asparagus, you arrange it beautifully on their plates. Get some orange sweet potatoes and there's some bright chopped cherries and strawberries and and cherry tomatoes and you and it, it just kind of goes from there the more open to try something if it's beautiful did your kids become vegan before or after you were they were born so they so after they um they have never eaten meat but during my pregnancy it, i actually had a long journey i was vegetarian for a long time um, during the pregnancy, I was on and off veg uh, vegetarianism. And then after they were born, I was just like, that's it. I'm done. The cravings are gone. And I know a lot more now. I got the certificate from eCornell, um, the plant-based certification. And, um, and gosh, now I cringe back thinking about how much time I wasted. I wish I would have had them vegan plant-based right from the start. They did have a little bit of dairy in the beginning there. Um, but now it, we have a very open conversation with very, very very, very open. And but at the same time, you can't expect perfection, I've noticed. So if they're at, at school and there's a birthday party and somebody gives them a candy corn, you can't freak out because it has plenty in it. You just, you, you have conversations with them, tell them why we don't eat certain foods. And if they know the reasons why, they're more likely to want to make those decisions just on their own in the future. Well, if they're five, like, do they even know what vegan means? And do they know that they're vegan? Totally. They totally get it. It's so funny. And in fact, they go to a preschool, which um, they're still allowed to go to because they're so young. Um, so thankfully during COVID, I mean, that place is a fort right now. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's more hand sanitizer in that building than any other place I've ever seen and masks and the whole deal. Um, but uh, they had 
a couple, like a month or so ago, they had um, health week. I'm like, oh great, here we go. What kind of <laughs> information are they going to be loaded up with? But the teacher, when we picked him up that day, she was just laughing and, uh, and, and she said, you should have seen your boys. You would have been very proud because when I told them that chicken and beef was a good source of protein, they both sat there and went like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a proud moment for me, but I said, I hope it didn't give you any trouble or anybody else. So like, oh no, it was just a thumbs down. Like, All right, okay. But yeah, they get it. You know, it's just, it's just it, filling them up with the reasons why without um, making sure that they, they don't um, horrify other members of the family who still eat meat um, with their comments, <laughs> which has happened, but we're working on Well, that. speaking of the why, in case somebody doesn't know, what was your why to go vegan? Oh, boy. So, gosh, I mean, I, I started vegetarianism way back in, in my early 20s. I'm 40 now. Um, my early 20s um, for animal rights reasons, just learning, uh, being sent links from my mother, from PETA and my roommate. But my mom and my roommate went, went vegetarian at the same time. So I was hit from both sides and that was it for me. But then I entered the fitness industry um, in my late 20s and hired a coach and I told him I was vegetarian and he was like, well, you'd have to eat a lot of tofu. And at that time, I didn't even really eat much tofu. And next thing I know, I'm being talked into eating fish and chicken because that's the only way to be fit and the only way to win a fitness competition, which we all know better now, right? Um, it's absolutely not true. So um, anyway, I went through a few years there where I was doing fitness competitions, but what was crazy was if I wasn't on a strict, crazy diet, getting ready for a fitness competition, um, then I was ballooning up in weight and, and, you know, it was 20 pounds heavier than what I was during the fitness competition days. And so it was a big yo-yo for me. It was a, you know, a wide range of clothing I had in my closet, but what was worse was that I had um, clients that were seeing this weight fluctuation. And here I was still doing my crazy five day a week, hour long cardio sessions, eating the high protein and being completely confused. And I, I just added in a little bit more calorie wise, a few more carbs, what's going on? After a while, I just couldn't take it anymore. It was just too much. And I started looking for answers for a better way to live. And that's when I just started diving in. I'm like, let's just start with the most filling yet nutrient dense foods. Let me find out what those are first, because that will definitely lead to weight loss if they're super filling, right? And so of course it's plants, um, high water, high fiber foods. The more I learned, the more obvious it was coming down to all the cancer research, heart disease, um, I'm the one that cooks for the family, so I knew I was responsible for their health too, and it just kind of went from there. Well, slow progression for me, really. I mean, I took a long time to give up the Parmesan cheese on my salad. You know, I, I wish it was like an overnight thing, like some people they see forks over knives and they're done. That's it. The next day they're vegan. Um, for me, it was a slow progress, but now I'm never going back. That's it. And well, it look it looks good on you because you look amazing. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah. When did you get into baking or do you, do you just like to cook in general or is baking your jam? So all along, since I was a little kid, I had two passions, uh, the fitness side and the nutrition, but then I also loved baking and being in the kitchen and getting creative for the longest time. I felt like, okay, as I get older, if I'm going to pick a profession, I'm going to have to pick one because the two can't live harmoniously. You can't have a bunch of cookies and be somebody who teaches about nutrition. Um, and, and really, I, I found that that's actually not the case. There is a, a such thing as balance. Um, it's created uh, first and foremost by being really present when you eat, knowing when you really want to treat, how much to have, listening to your body and stopping when you're done and knowing that it's perfectly okay to have another one when, when you really, really want it. Um, so it, that, that's a whole nother show for another day for you. We can get into that, but, um, it, it comes down to just, you know, going back to our instincts and listening to our bodies when we really want something that's a little bit of a treat and when we can skip it. So, um, anyway, so I, but with the book, um, I, I knew I always wanted to write a cookbook and COVID came along lockdown, um, starting to get the blues. I was like, gosh, I need a project. I need something. And I'm like, you know what? I've always wanted to write holiday themed vegan cookbooks just to help people, because I feel like those are the hardest times to be vegan is because you're used to all your childhood favorites and you wanna go back to the foods that you grew up with. And um, why not start with Christmas cookies, making them as delicious as possible and taste just as good, if not better than the original types that have the animal products in them that we grew up with. So that was the inspiration behind the book. Um, and uh, five months later, here it is. It was a, it was a quick project. 
Um, really important to me to have big, beautiful pictures for almost every recipe. Here are the brownies, kind of hard. It might be a little hard to see, but full page pictures for almost every single recipe. Here's pecan snowdrops. Uh, yeah, the photography is beautiful. Oh, thanks. And five months is pretty quick to get a book like that out. Oh gosh, you know, it, it was nuts. Um, I surrounded myself with some really smart people, hired an incredible photographer. In fact, I have a, a video up on YouTube showing a behind the scenes of one of the four photo shoots that we had and what it was like and the work that went into it and the styling. And uh, Vanessa Stump, my photographer, brought her assistant, Chris Hatcher. We're all here with masks, keeping as much distance as possible, um, but creating these beautiful little scenes for each and every recipe so that it would look so special in the book. And it wasn't just about necessarily the recipes, it was the experience that you had while you looked at the book. Um, it was really important to me to create that as well. Yeah, I did watch that video a lot. You have a wonderful YouTube channel. I watched a bunch of your recipes. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So on that note, maybe I should show you guys how to make these chocolate dipped coconut macaroons that we're making today. Absolutely, that may sound amazing. Okay, well, you know what? It's so funny. When I first started working on this recipe, I made it way too complicated. You know, a lot of people, I think what they do, uh, one mistake you can um, run into quite a bit when you're trying to veganize a recipe is to try and find exact swaps for the egg or the butter, um, especially the egg. That's what can be really tricky. Um, most macaroons have egg whites. And so I'm sitting here trying to figure out the aquafaba, which is the, the bean juice, right? From the can of garbanzo beans, trying to make that work. It was a complete mess. Finally, I just made it super simple. And here we are, seven ingredients. It couldn't be any easier. And I'm so happy that um, I decided to add this recipe to the book because it's so simple. Um, so we start with seven simple ingredients. We have, first we have shredded coconut. Now it's really important that you get the shredded type, which is really dry and powdery like this and not the flaked kind, not the kind, that sweet kind that we grew up with. And it's really important because it will hold um, together really nicely with this type of coconut. So we'll add that to our bowl. And next we have a little bit of sugar. I like to do uh, organic cane sugar and a little bit of vanilla extract. Have you ever used vanilla powder? Cause that's what I started using. It's so good. Oh yeah. And in fact, on that note, if I may do a little plug here, another one. Um, I use vanilla powder in my cookie kits. Um, I have a cookie mix line. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because you, you give people options so that they can make your things oil-free. I'd love for you to talk about that as well. Oh, sure. Yeah, so we will definitely get to that um, after we get these in the oven and get these going. I don't want to get too distracted, but yes, thank you for, for saying that. I would love to talk about that. Um, but vanilla powder in these mixes has been everything because um, I was wondering, like, how am I going to make a mix really simple for people if you just add maybe two ingredients and then that's it and they can make good cookies that are vegan and gluten-free on the fly whenever they want and not have to add vanilla extract. So anyway, well, yeah, we definitely talk more about that. Um, I love it. I love vanilla powder. Um, we have a couple of tablespoons of flour. You can do a gluten-free all-purpose. You can do regular all-purpose. Oat flour would look really nicely in this recipe. It's really versatile and it's just a small amount of flour anyway. And then our last ingredient for now will be just a tiny bit of salt just to help round out the flavors. The quarter teaspoon. So you guys are asking how to get the recipe. If you're watching on Facebook, I really recommend you try watching on YouTube because that's where all the fun is. We put everything in the show notes and the recipe is already there. If you're on YouTube, you can see. Oh, look who's watching. The person who recommended you. Lisa says, Audrey is such an incredible pastry chef and she has an amazing food blog with the most beautiful photos. And Linda, uh, let's see, Linda said, she is, a, what did you say? It was very nice. Yeah, she is adorable. Yeah, that is, the, you probably hear that uh, a lot. You are adorable. I think that's the definition of adorable. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> you got a great smile. Oh, thank you. So do you, Chef AJ, by the way. Thank, thank you. So, I forgot to yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm posting the link, guys. Yes, Judy, you're right. The book is sold out on Amazon. And that is why I'm posting the link to Audrey's website where it is not sold out. So I, I keep posting that one. Um, and maybe, maybe on Kindle, it's not sold out on Amazon, but the book is for sure. Right, so the card cover might be, that was a complete surprise. You, you brought it up right before we went live and we will get that fixed as soon as possible. But shop.audreydenham.com is the place to get it nice and quickly and easily. You can order it just as fast as on Amazon. We included all those great little buttons to make it super fast. 
on the website. And on that note, um, I'll, I'll mention the last ingredient I um, added was coconut milk, just a little bit of coconut milk that adds um, a nice bit of richness to the recipe and it works as a nice binder. Um, I want to say also, before I forget, the cookbooks, um, a percentage of the profits from each book sold will go towards charities supporting children in need. Um, I already have a couple of really great charities lined up um, and I'm looking forward to donating very soon. Um, another fun little detail that I love to share with people is that um, we decided to have each and every book printed, not only in the USA, but in Los Angeles, a family owned small printing company prints and assembles every single book. It um, was really important to me that it, it was super high quality, really, really gorgeous. We looked into other options, it just wasn't good enough. And so um, I'm proud to say that they're printed right here in Los Angeles and shipped out um, by our fantastic team. Nice. Even though it's on Amazon. So. All right, it's a good stir. Linda's asking how to get dry coconut, but I've seen it at Sprouts at Whole Foods. Oh yeah, you know Bob's Red Mill actually makes a really good one. Um, it's yeah, it's 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 just about everywhere now. It's usually found near um, either the baking in the baking aisle or sometimes you find it in random places like near the ground flaxseed, nuts, things like that. So usually in the baking aisle. Once we have it nice and combined, we grab either a small scoop, like a one tablespoon size sixty scoop like this one, or you can just grab around one tablespoon measuring spoon. Let me move this out of the way. The chocolate for later here. I want to line a baking sheet with parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, then any nonstick baking sheet will do. I love those. Uh, those. I, I have had the same one for 30 years. I'm not kidding. The Silpat, it's like still good. Oh yeah, amazing. Those little things, once you find them, they're keepers. Oh yes, they make such a difference in the kitchen. Yeah. Do you have an air fryer? Just curious. I do. And in fact, I made air fried French fries for my boys last night. Um, it, I actually learned from you how a potato can be your main course. Oh it, my God, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, my boys, they, they get air fried French fries for dinner with some broccoli and avocado and some strawberries on the side and they are as happy as can be. I know, that sounds great. Uh, I, that's I, potatoes and broccoli, my favorite dinner too, favorite lunch. And that, that's so, it's so cool when you see kids eating healthy. Oh, I'm so proud, honestly. And they're really brave uh, with trying new things. Um, my little redhead Jack, especially, he is just, he sees us eating it then there's just, he's learned to trust us, I think. Um, it's not with everything that we eat, but a lot of things. I'm really, really impressed. And then my little boy, James, he's my baker, my little brunette twin. Uh, he is just the sweetest. He wants to be with me in the kitchen. He wants to tear up the lettuce for the salads. Getting them involved is honestly a great way to get them to eat healthier foods, more vegetables. If you grow it outside too, even better. That's great. They get to be a part of it. Or you have them help you pick out stuff in the produce section of the grocery store. And then of course, cooking it and assembling in the, in the kitchen, as long as they're involved, they are more likely to eat it. So. Absolutely. Uh, Candy says, how old the boys are now? They're five, you said, right? Yeah, turned five in October and they are counting down the days until they're five and a half. It's just a big deal. <laughs> so. April, okay, cool. Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's it just, you know, it's, it'll, it'll be so interesting to see how they grow up versus all the other kids that, you know, cause when I was, I was obese when I was a kid, but nobody else was, but now it's pretty common for kids to be overweight and obese. Oh yeah. And it's interesting because we, they'll go in for their annual checkup and the, the doctor will let me know where they stand on the scale as far as percentage wise compared to other kids. And we have to just constantly keep in mind what other kids um, numbers are like these days. And so it's, it's, they're not necessarily underweight if they say that they're underweight, it might just be that a lot of other kids are overweight, which is really sad. Um, so, but my kids actually, um, they fall right around the 50th percentile, pretty much with everything. <laughs> they're high, they're high. So. Are they your little recipe testers when you're doing a new recipe? Oh, 100%. And in fact, um, my little boy, Jack, the redhead, his little thing that he does, I'll hand him a cookie and I'll be like, okay, what do you think? He'll stop, he'll taste it. And if I get a dance out of him, just like this little thing that he does, then that means it's good. And if it's not, he'll say, it's good. And then he'll walk by and just leave it on the counter and keep going. <laughs> That's interesting that at that young age, they have discernment of like a good cookie and a good cookie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think at this point, especially 
um, with how much I bake. I think they have a lot, a lot to compare with. Um, and sometimes I'll wait and not even have them test it unless I think it's pretty much there because I don't want to get my feelings hurt. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Do they have a, does, do, do they have a, each one have a favorite recipe from your book? Oh gosh. Um, they both love, uh, there's a, a citrus gumdrop cookie where you slice either the dot candies um, mm. and add them as little colorful um, uh, additions to each surface of the cookies. They're so colorful and beautiful. Um, they both love those. You can also use, there are some vegan gumdrops out there, which are great. Um, I have a, a website where I share lots of recipes, but there's one page, it's audreydenham.com slash ingredients, where I share all sorts of vegan finds, things that I used in the cookbook when I was creating the recipes. And so you can find the gumdrops there. Growing up, that was my favorite cookie. It was a, a, gum, a Christmas gumdrop cookie. And my sister oh. used those spice drops that you can get in the store, all different colors with the sugar on it. It was basically an oatmeal cookie. I would rather eat that than chocolate or anything, a gumdrop cookie. So magical, right? Yeah, there was actually a, one cookbook. I think it was a Betty Crocker cookbook where my mom had those cookies on the cover. And I would just stare at that cover. And I don't think my mom ever made them, but, <laughs> but, but I made them as I got older. And then of course I wanted to veganize it. Then I thought, you know what? We can add another level of flavor. Let's add some lemon zest to these cookies too. So we have that citrus element too, which actually really complements the flavor of the gumdrops in the cookie. So I, took, I added my own little special spin. So what I'm doing is I'm really packing the scoop so that we have some nice mounds. And what's nice is that these cookies will not spread at all. They will just bake in the shape that you give them. And you want to give them just about 15 minutes or so in the oven. And you don't want them brown. You just want them a little golden around the edges and maybe just a couple golden little pieces on top. And the recipe makes about 12 to 13 macaroons. Okay, so it looks like, let me set this aside. I did it a little bit in a hurry. You can kind of reshape them before they go in the oven, but you're looking at little domes that look like that go in the oven, but actually I have some already made so that we can get right to the marvelous chop chocolate dipping, um, which is the funnest part of all. So the chocolate, to... yes, we have to have the chocolate dipping ceremony. <laughs> Guys, make sure you check out the book. Can you get gumdrops without sugar? Good question, Joyce. I don't know. I could try to look it up for you, but I don't know. Dots, dots are the closest thing to it. Um, you know, you know, now, now at my age, I wonder, like, you, they always get so stuck in your teeth, you know? Oh. Like, Isn't it funny when you're a kid, you love that and you don't care and you're picking it out of your teeth, no big deal. But as an adult, it's just, it's so like, it's so annoying. I know <laughs> <laughs> just like corn, you know, I like corn, but it's like, is it worth it sometimes? You know I mean? Me on the cob, it's like, oh. And I was all about the sour candy and the fruity candy. Now for me, most of the time I want some chocolate. That's, that's usually the way I roll, but. I have some beautifully melted chocolate here. I'm a really big fan of Enjoy Life products. Um, their chunks and their mini chocolate chips, they have just have a really amazing flavor. I just melted down some of the mini chocolate chips for this recipe. And in Enjoy Life is a gluten-free brand, right? Oh yeah, they're free of the seven or eight most common allergens. So your dairy-free, soy-free, free of all of the major allergens. It's a fantastic company. Um, and I've been using their products for years. And they're pretty easy pretty easy to find at this point too. I think Target even carries their stuff. Um, so what you do is you just grab uh, one of these macaroons. You wanna make sure they're completely cool. I usually let them cool right on the baking sheet. Um, it takes about an hour or so. And then you take them off, dip it in. So you have about half of an inch up, maybe a quarter of an inch along the sides. And of course the bottom. That, and then back right where it was on the sheet and you let it set. And it takes about, I don't know, about an hour or so. If you're in a big hurry, you can pop it in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. But this is such an easy recipe, definitely a great one to make if somebody's a beginning baker or if you have some young folks in the house that really wanna make something fun, this is a great recipe. And that is all there is to it. And my husband, Jeff, he lovingly calls these uh, snowballs in the mud. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you melt your chocolate over a double boiler or do you do it carefully in the microwave? I'll do both. I, I, I don't have preference necessarily. I kind of like the double boiler method just because it's slow and gradual. Um, you're less likely to scorch your chocolate. Um, but if I'm in a giant hurry, you do 30 second intervals on your microwave stir in between. 
you usually don't need to do any more than a minute total um, and you're good to go. So it just depends on what you have available, what you have going on in your kitchen. Um, but double boilers is my preference. Yeah, because you can you can scorch it sometimes in the microwave if you're not careful. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard of a brand? Uh, they don't sell it anymore. But when I was a pastry chef, it's what we used at the restaurant because it was it was. I mean, it still had like sugar, but they felt it was less refined because it was sweetened with barley malt. It was called Sunspire. Have you ever do you ever remember that chocolate? No, 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 no. I want to look. Yeah, it, it was pretty cool because that's what all the macrobiotic chefs like Eric Lachesser and all those restaurants like M Cafe use because it was. I guess they felt it was less processed because I mean it still was sugar, but it was instead of like white sugar, refined sugar, it was barley malt, but it was actually a very good chocolate, but they just stopped making it. And I actually called them the other day and I said, why? And they said, I don't know. I'm sure, why do you stop making a product that was successful? But yeah, that's so interesting. That's too bad. Oh, that's heartbreaking when that happens. It's like one of your favorite restaurants closing down too. You're like, no, oh, why? Don't do it. But no, I haven't heard of that. I wonder if you can still get it on eBay. <laughs> that's a good, yeah, that's a good question. I'm going to write myself a note, but yeah, it's been gone for quite a while. Well, you know, I just noticed at Trader Joe's that they have a chocolate now that's like literally 100%, like there's no sugar in it. It's just cacao chips. I, you know, I, good old Trader Joe's, right? They, they surprise you with these things every once in a while. It's like they're vegan marshmallows. If you're ever looking for some um, vegan marshmallows, you wouldn't know they're vegan because they don't write that on the label, but anybody who's vegan usually knows about it. So if you have a Christmas treat that you want to make that um, calls for them, there they are. They're ready to go at good old Trader Joe's. And so, you have a recipe in the book for marshmallows. I do actually. So it is vegan Christmas cookies and cocoa. So the, the second half of, um, I guess the last, not half, but the last portion of the book is dedicated to cocoa recipes and the winter lattes that we all know and love um, that usually get at the coffee shops. Um, but of course I wanted something to be, um, to top those. And so I have a homemade vegan marshmallow recipe in there and some whipped creams. Uh, there's the general whipped cream um, and the general marshmallow recipe. And then I offer advice on how to make them flavored. So there's peppermint marshmallows in there. There's maple whipped cream, peppermint whipped cream, cinnamon whipped cream. And so anyway, I really had fun with it. It was great. I don't think a lot of people realize that not all marshmallows, just like not all sugar is vegan, just like not all alcohol is vegan. Oh yeah, and with my boys, I just wanted to make things easier on myself. So instead of telling them what gel, how do they make gelatin and how we want to avoid it, I just tell them, oh yeah, that has cow's feet in it and that's it, they're done, <laughs> like I'm good. And we'll be in places, stores, and they'll see a big shiny candy counter and they're like, mommy, does this have cow's feet in it? And <laughs> I see people looking and looking over. I'm sure most people have no clue and maybe they're going home and Googling it. I don't know, but. Um, That's adorable. Do you guys have any pets? We do. We have a, a seven pound miniature pincher, Rhodey. Uh, she used to travel. My, my husband's a comedian and um, back before I had kids, I used to travel with him and, and um, she would come along with us. And that's why her name was Rhodey. She was our little Rhodey. And um, now she's 12 and she's hanging in there and she's normally with me in the kitchen even if, but she must be sleeping somewhere. It's the afternoon. I think she's taking a little nap, but um, she's usually around to gather every drop that falls on the floor. So, so cute. <laughs> yeah. So these are all done. They're completely dipped in chocolate and ready to roll. They are such a delight for those who love mounds candy bars. This is a very similar taste. Um, just absolutely delightful and super easy. Um, and it, it was really important to me that I make the recipes as simple as possible in these in this book so that you don't have to be a pro to make them. I think the most challenging recipe in the entire book might be the peppermint pinwheels, but really anybody who's made pinwheels before, they, they know it can be a little challenging <laughs> getting those two colors of dough to line up and then to roll it beautifully. Yeah. Other than that, I, um, I, I still encourage you to make it because it's a delicious cookie. It's so yummy. But um, uh, other than that, all of them are really, really simple. Have you ever made a gingerbread house? You know what? So one of my best friends has a company, Lily's Gingerbread Lane. And I actually talked her into making a vegan version because I said, hey, that's where the world's going. Um, if you sell this, people are going to order it. And um, and so sure enough, we get her vegan gingerbread houses. But I usually don't because she's always sending us gingerbread houses. And she, when she was launching her company, she makes them for every single holiday, every occasion, Mother's Day, just a nice, unique gift. She um, makes them vegan now? 
Yeah, she'll make them vegan. The trickier part, honestly, the gingerbread itself was super easy to veganize, but it's the, the toppings, the candies. Yeah, and the white stuff, the oil icing. She had to do um, aquafaba for that. And it is tricky because it doesn't hold the same way that egg whites. And so, so I think she gets a little frustrated when I say, okay, I need to order a whole bunch of vegan houses. <laughs> you know, if we have some family members to give them to, because she knows it'll be a little trickier, but she's, she is such a pro. She's always fine tuning her techniques. And right now she's working around the clock in a commercial kitchen. Right well, now. you should introduce me. And when she's not as busy, let's have her on the show. Cause that's, that, that was my favorite thing. I could eat a whole house. I mean, literally I, I, and I always would buy those kits where you'd assemble them and I just would have so much fun building it. Oh yeah. She sells the kits too. She's awesome. Yeah. Lily's gingerbread lane. If anybody wants to check it out, I'll do a little plug for her. She's amazing. And then this, she's, she's getting her business rolling now. She's having to turn away a lot of orders, but some big ones from big corporate companies, but she got hit up by Google and Netflix recently. Um, the orders weren't too gigantic, so she was able to take them on, uh, but she's getting out there. I'm so happy for her. That's incredible. So tell us about Peanuts Bake Shop and how do we order it and how we can take those recipes and for people that are avoiding oil, how do they uh, substitute when they're making cookies? Oh yes, so let's talk some cookie kits. I'll move the macaroons aside. And our lovely chocolate leftovers. So the first flavor that I came out with was the chocolate chunk, which is basic, um, basically a chocolate chip cookie, but with chocolate chunks, really decadent, yummy cookie. The only ingredients that are called for on the back are a little bit of oil and water, but you can substitute the oil for a quarter cup of applesauce. And for me, I made them gluten-free because I don't like anybody to be left out. And I see how many people now are discovering that they are sensitive to gluten. And that was why I chose to make these gluten-free. And in fact, in the cookbook, I offer gluten-free recommendations for each and every recipe on how to make them gluten-free. Um, so this was the first flavor. The second flavor we have, which is my husband Jeff's favorite, the Midnight Chocolate Chunk. I used a type of cocoa here that is similar to what they use in Oreos. So it's that deep, dark, almost black cocoa. Um, really rich and yummy. And for this one, if you want to substitute the oil, you can definitely try doing the banana or the applesauce. To me, I could really taste that fruitiness. So I recommend um, a nut butter. So to add some sort of nut butter where the only ingredients are the nuts and no palm oil. Um, not only for health reasons, but also because it affects the texture of the dough and the cookie. So you want one that's just the nuts and the ingredients and that's it. Um, so that's a great way of that. And actually we prefer the cookies that way because they're really fudgy and gooey and amazing. So that's actually our preferred way to make these, I'll say. Are these available only on your website or do, are they carried in any stores? So that's actually my big project for next year is getting them into retail. I really want them in Whole Foods. Um, and Target, I would love that too. Uh, right now they're on Amazon and they are on shop.audreydunham.com or peanutsbakeshop.com. It'll all link to the same place. Um, and then uh, let's see. Oh, and I offer a three pack if you wanna be able to try all three flavors for a little cheaper. So you can look into that as well. Um, the final flavor is cinnamon oatmeal. If you're an oatmeal cookie lover, you have to try this because it is like grandma's house in a cookie, just so comforting and warm and delicious. And that cinnamon really comes through. For this one, if you wanna take out the oil, I would take a, a large, really ripe banana, mash it until it's almost pureed, and then add that. And actually, if you wanna jump on my website, um, on, I believe it, that might be the only thing that you change, but if you jump on my website and you look up banana bread oatmeal cookies on audreydenham.com, you'll find the full recipe because I might alter the water a little bit. And same for the midnight with the nut butter added. If you look up um, fudgy oil-free midnight cookies, I think is the name I give it, then it gives a full recipe step-by-step -step on how to make them. Nice. So, well, here's a great question from JL. If okay. we eat her cookies, will we look as good as she does? Ah. You're the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I have makeup and hair products to thank. <laughs> but yes, diet, of course, always makes a big difference. And, and one thing that I've been telling people too, um, yes, my, my main focus was making sure that these cookies tasted exactly like the animal-based versions, the ones that have the real butter and the real eggs and milk or whatever else that you normally add to a non-vegan cookie. Um, I want them to taste just as good. Um, but what people don't realize is that even if you have a vegan cookie that contains vegan butter or sugar, it's still going to be way healthier than a normal cookie. And the reason is, well, there's a few reasons, but first and foremost, every, um, every animal product, eggs, butter, 
milk, anything has cholesterol in it. And our bodies will absorb those outside sources of cholesterol. We do not need any outside sources. And I'm, as I'm sure you're telling people all the time. Um, so if you have a vegan cookie, you're completely free of the outside sources of cholesterol. Let your body make all the cholesterol it needs. You don't need any outside sources. Um, and then also um, what people don't realize is that in the fat cells of every living thing, a fish, an animal, a person, we hold and store toxins in those fat cells. So whenever you eat anything um, like butter or eggs um, that have high fat, you're taking in the toxins from that animal um, in your food. And so we're looking at lead, cadmium, other heavy metals, whatever came from their environment, pollution, you're getting it right in your food. Um, something people don't talk about it much. Yeah. Um, and then of course there's high saturated fats in, um, in animal products, uh, much higher than even um, vegan cookies usually. And then the, the animal-based saturated fats um, in studies show, as I've learned from Dr. Greger, uh, those sources are much more dangerous than plant-based um, saturated fats such as. And the thing is, is, you know, it, you know, for people want to eat flesh for whatever reason, you might not always be able to fool them. But nowadays it's a lot easier with meats and cheeses, but with cookies, like I said, nobody notices that the egg is missing or the milk is missing. So I wish, you know, pastry chefs and people would just understand you don't need eggs to bake. You don't, you don't need any of those animal products. It's not necessary for baking. It just isn't. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And when I was developing these recipes too, I just had to think, especially with the egg, I'm like, okay, what was the egg doing in this particular recipe? What was its purpose? And sometimes you have the flax egg and the, you know, the ground flax egg with the water and that's the answer to substituting in the egg. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's just a little bit of moisture. That's all you really needed. Um, and so it's just kind of figuring out what the role was in that particular recipe and, um, and figuring out the substitution accordingly. But yeah, when you, like you said, when it comes down to it, it's flavor. Um, and I have to say, I really applaud the UK. I feel like they are, they are way ahead of us and they are exploding with more and more products that are vegan and even their convenience stores are offering vegan meals. And I think it was a study that came out last year in January that said 25% of all um, UK residents had a vegan meal for their holiday. Um, and so I love those guys and they're, 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 um, trickling down their knowledge and their ideas and, and influencing the people here in the United States more and more. And uh, so I applaud them and I, and I can't wait till we get to that point too. I think it's right around the corner. I hope so. So Shantrika says, can Audrey package her products in compostable packages? So that's a great question. Um, it, was, it was something that I looked into and ultimately the number one thing was food safety. And so my, my top concern was making sure that there was no way that anything could get inside the packaging, that the ground flax seed wouldn't go rancid, that everything would be really pure and amazing and delicious, especially if somebody's trying something uh, labeled vegan for the first time. So I wanted something that would do well in heat if it was shipped in a hot environment that wouldn't um, be exposed easily or rip easily. Um, so that was the top, top concern. Um, at this point, um, I wasn't able to do it but I'm still looking into it and I'm constantly in contact with my, um, my packaging manufacturer to see what they're coming out with. And as soon as they come out with something like that, that is um, high safe, high safety level and looks really gorgeous too, because people eat with their eyes first. And a lot of the people that try these cookie kits um, are fans of my husband because it has one of his famous characters. He's a ventriloquist, um, Jeff Dunham. Peanut's one of his famous characters. And a lot of people will buy this and try it just because peanut is on it. And they, otherwise they would never buy anything vegan. But if the packaging didn't look beautiful and bright um, and enticing, then, then maybe they wouldn't have picked it up. And so it's all, it was all really tricky to figure out, but believe me, I'm still looking into it and I haven't given up yet. Nice. There's really not much, I can't think of really anything that somebody couldn't veganize in this day and age. It really seems that way, right? Um, it, it's, it's amazing how far along we've come in such a short amount of time. And, uh, and honestly, after the aquafaba came along, it was, it was almost like, okay, I think that we're there. <laughs> we're, we're pretty much there. Yeah, so, who, who invented aquafaba and how? I mean, that's incredible. You can make meringue. Like who, like what was he, who, who even thinks like that? That's amazing. He should oh, yeah. be like some kind of prize, Nobel prize or something. No kidding. I am with you. I totally agree. It's, it's amazing. And I think there's a couple of people online that claim that they discovered it first, but um, there's even one person who wrote an entire book with aquafaba recipes. And I think that we just barely scratched the surface as to what this amazing bean juice can do. 
Awesome. So um, right now your Peanuts Bake Shop cookie mixes are available in three flavors. Is that correct? Yes. Any more coming soon? Oh, yes. Uh, so for the longest time, I thought the next one would definitely be sugar cookie. But now I'm kind of thinking it might be a Funfetti or like a birthday cake, something along those lines. Um, so if anybody wants to leave a comment and vote, please do, because I want to hear what everybody thinks. Um, but eventually, I'm sure I'll come out with both. So those are the two that I'm that I'm toying with. That this cookbook definitely became top priority the last five, six months. And um, now that it's out, I'm getting work on getting these in stores and then of course develop a fourth flavor. Um, also on my website, we have tote bags and some cute aprons available too. And I have some pot holders coming out soon and some um, kitchen utensils such as spatulas and measuring spoons that are all stainless steel and um, silicone. Nice. Have you been able to influence any people in your sphere, friends or family other than your immediate family to eat healthier or even go vegan? Oh, sure. Um, the, in fact, my friend Janet, who does the gingerbread houses, she had a daughter about seven months before I had my boys. It's so funny because we were both in our late 30s, early 40s. Um, and in fact, me and three of my best friends, we all had kids all at once. It was kind of funny because none of us were, you know, mid-20s or anything. We were a little bit older and we all just had kids. And so we're all kind of, you know, it, exchanging messages and figuring out little things as they come along these milestones and but but she really wanted to make sure that her daughter was as healthy as possible my friend Janet and um, so we both um, are swapping vegan uh, advice like crazy and of course I really dove in head first and got the certificate and um, from e Cornell and so um, she usually is, is is hitting me up for the the fine details like the b12 and the omega threes how do we get them those types of things um, and uh, I, I have a feeling that her vegan line of her gingerbread houses is, is going to really grow. Oh, people are vote, people are already voting here. Lemon cookies, sugar oh. cookies. Yeah. Nice. Okay, great. I can't wait to look at those. Um, but Funfetti, they're saying they think will be a good seller. Yeah. It's tricky. We have um, we have certain types of sprinkles out there that um, that are vegan and um, that are really high quality. And what's tricky is that once moisture hits them, sometimes the colors can bleed. So you have to find just the right sprinkle. So that'll be my project, finding those, um, if that's the way we go. But um, anyway, I have fun. If I could, I would just be in the kitchen um, all day, every day. <laughs> what, about, what about veganizing all the, all the Girl Scout cookies, like Thin Mints? Oh yeah, so I did the tag alongs last January during Girl Scout cookies. So I have a video on YouTube on how to make those. It's three ingredients, uh, vegan tag along cookies. Um, those are the ones that are like the, the one with the cookie and then the peanut butter and then they're dipped in chocolate. So uh, that one's on there, but yeah, Thin Mints is next for sure. Um, so, so good. I love the, like the caramel ones with the chocolate and um, the coconut. I wish I could remember the name right now. What is it, Samoas? Yeah, I think Samoas, because when you eat them, you want Samoa. Yeah. That's, that's how I remember it, yeah. Because there's a guy I had on the show, Chef Colin McCall, and he did all those. He made a bunch of all Girl Scout cookie smoothies, but I've never seen anybody really veganize all the Girl Scout cookies. That would be kind of cool. So huh. Claudia says, any ideas for a healthy icing to decorate cookies? Oh, I have a vegan royal icing in my book and in my, in my new cookbook, Vegan Christmas Cookies and Cocoa. Um, so it was really important to me that I not only included a really simple foolproof sugar cookie recipe, but also the um, royal icing recipe to go with it. And um, it, it, it's such a great recipe. It's so foolproof and I love it. And, it. and there's lots of little tips and hints on how to make it just perfect for you too. And I'm looking for the, for the picture here so I can show you. And I have the gingerbread boys too, for the gingerbread boys. And I decorated those with royal icing also. Um, so all the favorites, I wanted to make sure I included all the favorites. And in fact, back in June, I held a survey on my Facebook page asking people to tell me what their favorite Christmas cookies were so that I knew which ones I had to include in the book. Right, we've, we've got a request for snickerdoodles. Is there snickerdoodles in the book? There's definitely snickerdoodles in the book. And it's probably my top five favorite recipes, I have to say. It's, uh, we, what, which ones are, is, are you leaving out for Santa? Oh, okay, so here, I thought I had a royal icing picture, but it's just a picture of me. <laughs> so anyway, um, and then the, the sugar cookies that they go on. So we're def I think we'll definitely be leaving some really pretty sugar cookies decorated for Santa, snickerdoodles. Um, I have a red velvet crinkle cookie recipe that is to die for. It's my husband's favorite, I think. 
um, out of everything in the book. Um, gosh, it's a classic peanut butter cookie. Uh, it's going to be tough to decide. No, I saw, I saw a video of you making a really easy peanut butter cookie with four ingredients. Really easy. Yeah, it's my top video um, on my channel, I think. Yeah, that's right. There's, I always do. I always watch that one first. Uh, Beverly says, could you please show the cookbook again and say the title? And I'll, I'll, I keep posting a link to it. So Yeah. So shop.audredenim.com. We have the hardcover version and then here's the back. And then there's also ebook versions available for those that prefer that. And um, what else can I say about this book other than um, I'm really excited about it. It's, it's my- is it, your, is it your first book? It is. And I honestly, I hope to tackle all the holidays. I'm thinking that maybe the next one will be Halloween. Maybe do some kind of Halloween baking book. I think that'd be really fun. Um, and then uh, I'm going to tackle Thanksgiving, just make it as easy as possible to be vegan, have all the recipes that you know and love veganized so that you don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, I find a lot of people kind of fall off the wagon around the holidays because they want to go back to the, what they knew growing up and those childhood favorites. And, and then some people have a hard time going back after the holidays. They forget their reasons why they did it to begin with. And um, so that was, this is my little way of trying to help people out in that way. That's right. People say your skin is beautiful. Do you have any vegan products that you love to use? Um, once again, makeup. I have to think makeup, but <laughs> but um, yes. What is my skin? Oh gosh, I always forget the name, but I can look it up really quickly. But thank you so much for the nice compliment. Um, and I wish I could remember the name of the skin care line off the top of my head, but I have it here. It's um, not called essence, but something like that. And if you look at the ingredient, here we go. Em eminence, eminence. Yeah, I've heard of it. Eminence, yes. And because I just reordered it the other day, so I was able to pull it up. If you look at the ingredients, it's like guava and all of these amazing things found in nature. So um, a great, great company, Eminence. Nice. So, so people are saying they appreciate all your suggestions for substituting oil. Do you have any for sugar? For sugar. Yes, um, many of the recipes I have on my website, um, I get really creative with dates, uh, an amazing substitute. Um, the only issue with dates is that sometimes the high fiber in the date can affect the texture of the, of the recipe. So in that case, maple syrup is a nice alternative. It's not processed like white sugar. Um, you still have some of the minerals intact, still very much a sweetener and, and is your body thinks of it as a sugar, but at least it's not processed and, um, just like with some white sugars that has the bone char they use in the factories to process the white sugar. So a lot of people don't realize that white sugar, not all white sugar is vegan because it's processed with bone char. Mm -hmm. When you do use, when, when your recipes do call for vegan butter, do you have a favorite brand? I do, uh, Earth Balance. Um, I like Earth Balance because it's a vegetable oil blend. Um, and uh, whereas some vegan butters, their first ingredient will be coconut oil. For me, um, I, I just like the flavor better of the earth balance where the vegetable oil blend is the first ingredient. I think that it, it just has a nicer, more buttery flavor. Um, and then the coconut oil type vegan butters tend to make your food taste like coconut. Um, but everybody can have, um, can try out whatever they use um, and whatever they prefer and see how it turns out. But I think that everything turns out just so and just perfectly and is the closest thing to real butter um, with earth balance. You know, you really could do a baking book for every holiday. You know, I was thinking you could even do one for like Passover, Rosh Hashanah, because I was wondering, do you, have you ever made rugala? Not yet, but I have some team members, um, Emily and Andrew, two people who work for me who are Jewish and they're like, that would be amazing. Please do that. And so it's on my list for sure. Yeah. Well, we've got two requests for a white chocolate macadamia nut cookie here. Yeah. Yum. And what's really nice is that there's actually some great vegan white chocolates out there. Um, the one, my favorite actually comes in discs and it's actually on my, um, my website, audreydenham.com slash ingredients. I can't remember what brand I use, but you do have to chop up the discs in order to use them. But that's the thing that um, the brand that comes the closest to um, real white chocolate, the one that contains dairy. And actually I wish I could remember the name of the brand, but I have it on my website. You make, I, I'm trying to remember, there was, used to be these cookie bars my mom used to make when I was little. I think they were either called magic cookie bars or seven layers. And you poured a can of carnation sweetened condensed milk over butterscotch. Do you know what I'm talking about? Chocolate chips cookie. Oh, it's so good. And actually, 
So the main thing that isn't vegan in, in that recipe, um, oh man, I'm craving those now that you say that, is that, that condensed milk, of course, but now they're making um, coconut condensed milk, or you can simply just do um, some canned coconut milk and mixed sugar in it, and it's pretty much uh, coconut condensed milk. Um, you might need to uh, simmer it for a bit if you, if you have a sugary texture, but otherwise, that's pretty much all it is. And then um, you have the graham crackers. And so if you're trying to avoid honey and you want to go completely vegan on those, Biscoff cookies, those little ones that are so yummy. And sometimes you get them in, um, on the airplane back in those days when we flew, right? Um, those Biscoff cookies have a very similar flavor to graham crackers. And so you could use those in place of um, the honey containing graham crackers. That is so cool. Yeah, guys, have any more questions for Audrey? Buy the book. And even if you don't make the cookies yourself, I think it'd make a great gift. It's a beautiful coffee table book. Just the pictures are so beautiful. Yeah, she's there are seven layer bars. I think we call them magic cookies growing up. I'm on it, both. Yeah, she would kind of flip flop, but yes, so good. And, and what was nice about those is that they would they would keep throughout the season and, and they'd slowly get more stale on <laughs> time and buy if people didn't eat them right away. But either way, they're always so good. And oh yes, I think they had butterscotch chips too, but there's a brand called King David that makes vegan butterscotch chips on Amazon too. You know, so. Biscoff, I haven't flown anywhere in a year, but Biscoff, they give, that was, a, they give it to you on the plane. That's, yeah. I think yeah. it was Delta. And fun fact, I actually worked for an airline when I was 18. I worked for Hawaiian Airlines. I worked in the airport as a customer service agent. I love that job. Um, but every now and then I would um, get pushed up to the first class lounge to work up um, in there, which was so nice because it was nice and quiet and peaceful. But those cookies were there and I snuck quite a few, I will admit, they, they're, they're the best. So Joe says, cookie monster here, just listening to this nice and pretty lady makes me want to get it for my lady. Sure, that's what I think, really a great gift. And if you don't have to give it to somebody who's vegan, just give it to, yeah. Yes, it's only out of stock on Amazon, Kathleen. I've been posting the link. You can get it on Audrey's website. Yes, and I'll, I'll, I'll tackle that Amazon issue right away. Um, all of those orders go straight to um, our awesome merchandise team. And so it shouldn't be out of stock. I'm going to jump on that as soon as we're done here. And that should be fixed very soon. But Let's, anyway, stop, stop I, I saw a question from Barbara. If substituting dates for maple syrup, what would the ratio be? So you're using dates instead of maple syrup? Well, maybe instead of white sugar. I think, you know, because one's a liquid, white sugar is a, is a dry sweetener and maple syrup is a liquid sweetener. Right. And so that's where things get tricky. Um, I would actually say it, it's kind of a trial and error type of thing. Um, they do sell date paste too. So it's already pureed. Um, you probably just need to add some water to it. And you could even boil it on the stove or steam it for a bit so that it gets even thinner. You get mixed in with some water um, and it becomes sort of a, a liquid version. But um, when it comes to um, substituting, you have the, the dates and the sugar. You know, coconut sugar is a nice substitute too. You might want to turn to that, turn that route first. Um, I usually use dates when it's something like a pudding or um, I have a mousse recipe on my website for um, chocolate avocado mousse um, where I use dates. That's a nice one there and smoothies, just sweeten some smoothies if you ever, um, if you ever want something like that. Um, dates are great there. But as far as substituting out white sugar, coconut sugar is a nice option. It's very minimally processed and, um, and it does have minerals as well as the maple syrup. Yeah. And you know, you can substitute, uh, they have, have you ever used date syrup? There's a company I love called I Love Date Lady and that, that can be used at any time, any liquid sweetener like agave or maple syrup is being used. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. I forgot all about that until you said that. Yes. Yeah. No, I like, I like that one. It's, it's, yeah. it's very good. So where do you want people to go other than to buy your book? Like where do you like them to follow you? Is it Instagram? Is it YouTube? I've been posting your YouTube channel as well. Oh, thank you. Um, so shop.audreydenham.com. Um, A-U-D-R-E-Y-D-U-N-H-A-M, um, shop, shop.audreydenham.com is the shop where you can find the book and the cookie kits. Um, there's free shipping uh, for U.S. orders over $60, and there's also um, international shipping available as well. And uh, let's see, I have a YouTube channel, if you look for my name, Audrey Denham, but then also um, social media, Instagram, Facebook, you can find me at Audrey Denham and audreydunham.com. I'm saying my name a million times here um, for, the, for the recipes, the written recipes. Well, that's great. Well, thank you. I wish you every success with the book. I hope, I mean, I'm glad, I guess I'm glad it sold out. That must mean that a lot of people bought it. Yeah, I'm going to look into that right away. We'll, we'll get that fixed right away. There's books available. Um, we, have, we have a couple boxes left in the warehouse now and the printing company here in Los Angeles. They're working on more. 
it shouldn't be sold out. So I'm going to look into that really when we get it. Uh, well, it's a good problem to have. So yeah. thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much for doing this. It was, I really enjoyed meeting you and you're Hi. adorable and your food looks amazing. And thanks for, thanks for getting people to eat vegan. And thanks for get, having a vegan family. Like that's amazing. Oh, thank you. You just take it one day at a time. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. It's the what you do 99% of the time, the majority of the time that matters most. And you just do the best you can every day and you never give up. So, right. and, and don't forget, before you eat a cookie, eat your greens. Yes, always. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks. It's so nice to meet you, Audrey. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time when we'll be having another wonderful cooking demo from Kathy Fisher of Straight Up Food. She's going to be making a holiday cornbread and a cauliflower soup. Take care, Audrey. Thank you so much. Thank you.